I'm John and she's Kate and this is Plus 8 on Block. Before we get started, I want to thank everyone for tuning in. We really appreciate the support and if you can like and comment below, it, it, it just leave your thoughts and, and please contribute to the discussion. It really helps out what we're doing here tremendously. Um, and uh, so we're going to get right into it, talking about where we think the characters are going to end up in terms of buff, nerfed, or maybe, you know, mostly left alone. Uh, Capcom said they're going to touch everyone. Um, so, you know, their chances of no changes for people are, are you know, that's not going to happen. Everyone's going to get touched. We're going to talk here with Luke. And right off, I'm going to say, I think this character is getting nerfed because 16 out of the 23 matches played at Capcom Cup 10, which just happened a couple months ago, that 70% of the matches featured Luke. We saw a lot of people playing this character as he was the number one most represented fighter for all the people who made it into the largest esports tournament ever in terms of prize money. Uh, you and I both saw a lot of Luke matches at Capcom Cup 10, and I saw someone else watching those matches as well. That would be Nakayama, the lead developer of Street Fighter VI. So anyone who thinks Capcom didn't notice this uh, should think again. Going by usage, Luke is one of the most highly represented characters in the entire game. And when Luke hits you, he gets far too much reward for that and privilege and the risk he must take. Like, it's just it's it's just too much for what the character gets right now. And I propose that the main nerf that Capcom gives him this time around is decreasing his damage output. He has some very lopsided matchups in Street Fighter VI, and these are a bad thing for the integrity and balance of the game. And you want the playing field uh, as reasonably fair as possible, and a character who does too much damage relative to their risk and balance can ruin the fun for too many people. Well, one thing that is for certain, we have seen a lot of Luke's aggressively in Capcom Cup and just active in high-level play. So it would be nice to even out the variety a little bit there. And uh, one thing that is for certain, when Ed, the DLC character, was active uh, in February time after Capcom Cup, we did see a bit of a patch come through and we did see an adjustment to Luke's level one where uh, his hurt box has been expanded on the startup of the Vulcan. In addition to um, a crouching medium punch adjustment, that's going to be another nerf there for Luke. Uh, the three frames is going to... Um, be more vulnerable if he whiffs for recovery. So, one thing for sure, Luke right now, according to the statistics for the character stats on uh, StreetFighter.com for the master list, he is listed as number two. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I would say a nerf, a little bit of a nerf or um, quality of life uh, update for Luke would be would be okay. So, so yeah. are we generally saying we're thinking Luke should get some nerfs or what's your thoughts, John? Yeah, I definitely yeah. want him to get nerfs. Um, I really think, as you mentioned, that that character variety is a really important thing. Um, when we lack character variety in these games, it's like you add a character and if they just can't make that impact, they can't make that, that grade on the tournament level, it really sucks to not see them. And, and you have characters like Luke that kind of crowd out everyone if they're too strong. Mm -hmm. um, and my proposal here is that I'm glad you mentioned the crouching medium punch because I think that was a really good step in the right direction. Um, I would actually leave everything else that he has now intact, but just hit his damage. And I think that if his damage is reduced, one of the big sentiments I'm seeing online right now is that, um, let's take another character out there that, that does a huge combo that lasts for 10 seconds and it takes refilling the gauges and micro walks and all this other kind of tech stuff to do. And then the sentiment I'm seeing is that Luke can come along, along and, and obliterate that damage in half the time for half the resources. Right. That's not a good look. You don't want your character just to completely outclass the other people out there. And I think that starting with Luke's um, standing medium kick and standing heavy kick, I looked at the damage of those specific moves and they're a little high compared to the other cast members. And it's just kind of like, he doesn't need that. Like, like Luke is already very strong as is. Like, why, why do those two moves in particular do more damage than most of the other cast? And so that's where I'd really go with the character Character. And, and I, I, I do think he needs a few more nerfs to get him in line with the rest of the, the roster. So we're saying Luke is going to get the nerf! <laughs> nerfs <laughs> for Luke. So that's it. All right. So moving on here to Kin. Uh, when I said Luke was the number one represented character at Capcom Cup 10, there was a close second and it was Kin. 
Uh, he's number one actually in the vast majority of the stats as well, all the official ones uh, in game that Capcom publishes. And the statistical data in this game is very helpful for, for us in the community to examine. And we cite that stuff here at Event Hubs. We use data to inform our opinions. And you know who else does? The developers of Street Fighter VI. Right. This yes. guy, by a number of metrics, is just as good as Luke. So I think he needs to be nerfed a little bit further. And I think they should start by nerfing his fireball. Ken's gen rise are very good. Uh, he deals a lot of damage. He has a lot of pushback. Pushback, especially in Street Fighter VI, is very strong because you can get a splat against the wall in the corner. Or if you're burned out, it's completely devastating because uh, you'll be stunned. So um, uh, we had spoken about this the other day uh, that the Genrai's have uh, the OD Genrai. To spend the bars to be able to do it, you would get the increased damage, you would get the corner push, and uh, you would have to spend and have good meter management to do it. So I would think that it would be fair to have one of his strongest options be the OD Genrai, whereas maybe a little bit of a nerf to his light, medium, and heavy Genrai's. And um, according to the uh, patch that was in February time. They did give a nerf to his neutral light punch. Uh, his hurt box on startup has been expanded uh, initially, and then through frame seven through eight, uh, the hurt box then does retract for Ken. So that's that's definitely a start in the right direction. In addition to his air Tatsumaki, but I I do think um, in addition to character variety. It, it could it can could handle a little bit of a, a knockdown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned the corner here because the corner in Street Fighter 6 is absolutely positively where you do not want to be. Mm -hmm. It's so deadly to be there and you will see so many games very quickly, one, effic efficiently and effectively if you can push a corner in there and mm -hmm. Ken, Ken is extremely strong at doing corner carry right yes. now. Uh, way too good at that if you ask me and so that's the one other thing besides his fireball that I would nerf that I think he really needs. Right. But speaking of Ken's fireball, it, it's... Ryu is the character of the Shotos who's known for a great fireball. And the fact that Ken, where his fireball should really be a utility move, like kind of like a helpful thing, like but not like a game changer. Right now, there are certain, certain circumstances where Ken's fireball is better than Ryu's, and that should never happen. Uh, right. Uh, Ryu is the fireball character. Ken is the dragon punch character. If you go and you look at the, the dragon punch damage on Ken, it's always higher. He gets more hits. That's what you expect from this character. You do not expect him to have a great fireball. And so Capcom really messed up there by giving him that effective of a fireball. I think you really have to change that. And, and with his generate kicks, I could see them nerfing him. I wouldn't be too opposed to keeping him mostly intact because his crazy kicks from Super Turbo, that's kind of like mm -hmm. a character. It's kind of a character trait at this moment in time, that's along true. with his dragon punch. Um, and if he's using like his dragon lash and and good footsies to get in. I don't mind it so much, but this is a character that that really has too much of some some things he should not have. Particularly again, his fireball and his corner carry. So I'm I'm definitely voting for a nerf on this a guy. How about nerf. you? Three? <laughs> nerf. All right, <laughs> both nerfs for us. We've got another one, bam. Yeah. So moving on here, we've got Ryu. Um, and since we were just talking about the Shotos, I wanted to talk about the, the, this big character in the franchise. Mm -hmm. And um, the biggest buff would would actually be for for Ryu to have nerfs to to Luke and Ken because those characters completely overshadow Ryu right now, and people who would normally play Ryu are going to those other characters because they're much stronger. So if yes. both of those get nerfed, Ryu is gonna come up quite a bit in the charts along with everyone else. Um, so I think that would be a very big advantage for him. Um, but I would also like to see Capcom increase the damage on his fireballs slightly to make that character uh, trait stand out a bit more. This is a fireball master, one of the best projectile throwers in the game. He has become one of the most powerful characters in the entire lore of the franchise, and the fireball being a signature tool, it does not stand out enough right now. And unfortunately, Capcom has shifted Ryu to be much more of a rushdown character in this modern era instead of the traditional mid-range zoner that we all fell in love with. That's Ryu. Ryu standing back there doing the crouching medium kick into fireballs, doing all that kind of stuff, the fireball traps. That's the Ryu we know and love. I really am kind of disappointed with Capcom that they've taken him in such a rushdown direction from, from five onwards now. And I would like to see the character come back to more of a mid-range zoner type. That's the Ryu we all know and love and who he should be. There's plenty of other characters who rush down make Ryu that mid-range zoner again make his fireball better so right now uh, I really believe after this most recent patch Ryu is in a much better spot in addition to coming into Street Fighter 6 he hits like a tank 
So I think an increase to fireball damage would also really work out in his favor. Uh, in addition to his Hashigeki, did get some considerable uh, adjustments and buffs along the way. In addition to his um, Overdrive EX uh, Shoryuken uppercut, uh, does have, um, it was a knockback and now it is a blowback for uh, a little bit more uh, availability for extra damage there. And uh, we do have uh, what we just said, uh, buffs to the Hashigeki, um, you know, and that can all, all help him too. Ironically, as of today, the statistics for Ryu, for the Masters list, he is ranked at number three. Mm -hmm. He's ranked at number three. Ken is number one, Luke is number two. Mm -hmm. So... That's 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 very good, very good for Ryu right now, and yeah. there he is. So, Kate, are, are you wanting to buff or nerf Ryu? I mean, I think he could use a little, uh, yeah, a little something. I'm going to be curious to see how his balance is going to be compared to Akuma's in the future. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yes. yeah. Akuma yeah. could very heavily overshadow him, and uh, that might happen here uh, just at the end of May. That's kind of when we're speculating on that, when that might right. happen, but yes. Uh, I, along with you, I think that Ryu needs just a, a bit more buffs. They did a pretty good job with this most recent patch, but just a bit more, just to, to kind of push him up there. Um, so next up, we have JP. Buffs! Um, buffs, yes, definitely buffs <laughs> forth. Uh, uh, now, JP, I'm actually in favor of wanting to nerf this character. Uh, I've been a, a bit mixed on what to do with him, because I do feel like Capcom got him where he needs to be for the most part. Mm -hmm. Um, he has some really lopsided matchups in his favor still, however, and his balance might be just a tad too good for, for what he has in terms of his skill set. Um, as such, I recommend knocking down the damage on one of his specials, specifically his cane strike. I looked at that and I noticed that, that the damage on that looks pretty pretty strong compared to the rest of the cast. And JP is a character who really should get his damage and his setups off of zoning people. Um, and, you know, doing some stuff like, you know, longer like juggle combos off of his uh, um, departure, things like that. Like, those are the stuff that, that he should be doing. Like him getting a bunch of ma massive damage off of his cane strikes when people are up close to him, I don't think that's really reflective of the character. He should make people go through a minefield and other things. So that's one other nerf I would throw a JP's way and I, th I think he would still end up okay. JP initially for Street Fighter VI um, and the Street Fighter series as a whole, they were nervous to add in a character like JP. Um, because of his mechanics and how different his mechanics are, they were afraid it was going to sort of uh, break some of the continuity of the game historically. So when I first saw JP, I thought of Shang Tsung from Mortal Kombat and um, you know his juggle combos with uh, you know the, bu the bubbles and everything that he would do. JP was a very strong character right out the gate. Uh, with this most recent patch, has received some nerfs along the way. Nerfs especially to his amnesia. Scaling the damage from an initial 15 down to a maximum of 60%. In addition to his crouching uh, fierce, his crouching heavy punch, now as an anti-air, the invincibility for a mid-air attack coming in, his upper body uh, invincibility is is basically now removed. Hmm. So which I was I was sort of uh, sort of surprised, you know, a little bit as too. But but the thing is, is that I remember for Vega, Vega's anti uh, Vega Claw Matador, his anti-airs aren't necessarily the best either. But that's how they try to balance him out because yeah. he's got speed and he's got range and full screen motion. Um, I have a feeling that they tried to have a little bit of a trade with the anti-air with JP because of that. So if JP uh, does have a little bit of a nerf um, in addition to what it, he has, I would hope it's a very slight one. But he is sitting comfortably at the Masters as a uh, eight spot. Okay, yeah. So... So pretty far up there. So are you going with a buff or a nerf on this one? A, t a slight nerf, not slight nerf. too crazy. All right. Yeah. So is 
For as much hate as this character gets, uh, and this would be Guile, I don't think his tournament results were on the same level as the other top tier characters in Street Fighter VI. Right. Um, he has some really strong and really bad matchups, but he never really had the dominant results the other top tier characters have had. As such, I'd pretty much leave Guile where he's at right now and suggest small changes for him. Um, and, and if the other top tiers get nerfed, I could possibly see Capcom giving Guile more nerfs as well, because he might end up being a bit too good then if, if they, you know, all the other top tiers are nerfed around him and Guile stays the same, that might be too much. But outside of that potential scenario, I'd pretty much leave him intact. Mm -hmm. I think Guile is also at a very good spot. Uh, I don't think that, in my opinion, he needs too much adjustment or, or work with. Um, we're not seeing a flood of Guile players, you know, all over the place. One thing is for sure, in my opinion, it seems when Guile is burned out, he can play almost as solid as he does when he's, you know, in full full health. So, uh, Guile, he, he's holding his own, but he's not out there uh, causing any major disruptions. And um, I would like to see more Guile players. So, in my opinion, I would just keep them the same. All right. All right. So, next up, we've got your main, Kate. Why don't you go ahead and kick us off? Uh, with Even that, uh, what do you want to do with DJ? DJ, clearly he needs some buffs <laughs> to his damage. And <laughs> uh, me personally, I mean, I would just like to see uh, a better hitbox on his jackknife uh, up kicks, mm -hmm. you know? But that's just me. I guess I could just do a uh, background house, you know, for his anti air. But, uh, you know, I'd like to see his up kicks. Get, get a little bit better of a, uh, a connection up in the air. But generally speaking, uh, DJ's doing fantastically well. He's sitting at a spot of uh, five on the um, master's list there. And he did receive a nerf recently to his medium uh, slicer kick. And basically, it delivers less of a knockback to somebody to push them into the corner. But then, of course, you can just grab them out from something like that. In addition to the slicer getting uh, that little bit of a nerf, they expanded the hurt box along with it. So, um, yeah, and this is the kick that he does out of the sway, uh, the little uh, light kick low and stuff. But I, but I think, uh, in my opinion, from that, he should just stay the same. Stay mm. the same. <laughs> so I, I've got a little bit of a different opinion on this. I actually no. think that this guy is going to get nerfed. Um, ah. I, I think DJ might see two substantial changes. One, an adjustment to how Drive Rush works potentially on a universal scale. Right. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily going to just target DJ. I think it's actually going to target Drive Rush in general. Um, this is actually something I've been talking about since the beta of the game that I felt like some of the Drive Rush stuff in this game is a little bit too dominant. And when we hear people talk about it on social media and stuff, Drive Rush is typically one of the biggest complaints we hear about in this game mm -hmm. uh, consistently. So, and, and DJ is a very heavy Drive Rush character. Yes. Um, and then uh, he also has a lot of tools at his disposal. He's, uh, you know, the ability to, to zone, to rush down and do all that kind of stuff. I don't know if very high damage should be something that he keeps given the things that he has at his disposal. I wouldn't actually nerf his damage into the ground, maybe just adjust up a bit. So he's doing like two to 3% less on some of the combos he's pulling off. So overall, I'm voting for a nerf on DJ, um, mostly because of, of dry rush. Sorry, Kate. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and a little bit on the damage. Uh, I think he, he just does a little too much for his utility right now so moving on here we've got cammy and for DJ. <laughs> <laughs> um We've got Cami, and people are going to be shocked if they know my history. Uh, that that I, I actually think uh, Cami should only get small changes here, um, uh, but I think Capcom. Um, I, th so this is my running joke here that I think Capcom CEO is a huge fan of Cami, and that that he wants to see her buffed every single time out, <laughs> and that's typically. What Capcom does, they have a very difficult time nerfing this character or leaving her alone. They're, they're like, oh, hey, like Cammy's pretty good. Let's buff her some more. That's typically what they do. Um, so uh, as much as I'm going for small changes here, I would also be a little surprised if that's what they do. Um, but speaking a little bit more to her gameplay, I, I don't think that she's been winning enough to warrant a ton of nerfs. And I generally think her gameplay has held up pretty well in Street Fighter VI. It's with the parry system and with how everything works. I don't think that she's overpowered, nor do I think she's... Um, 
too easy to play for right. her strength and stuff. I think she falls into a really good spot. So my vote here would be for small changes. How do you feel about Cammy? I feel pretty much uh, exactly the same. On the statistics list for Masters ranking, she is a four, which is pretty pretty good. Um, we did talk uh, just the other day a little bit about um, her cannon spike and her cannon strike. Uh, for me personally, if she does start to get uh, a little too overpowered, I would think those are two things that we could look at for her. Um, in my opinion, just how we could compare her to Ken with the uh, Hadoukens. Um, if you're going to have access to those uh, two moves specifically, I think to get the ac all of the damage and extra properties along with it, you should have to meter manage and spend the OD for it. Uh, either that and in addition, those two moves specifically should have a tiny bit less damage. But that's only if Cammy's out of control. And right now, I, I do think that she's, she's in a pretty good space. So same! All right. <laughs> so next up, we've got Jury. Um, and, and much like DJ, uh, Jury's Drive Rush, I think, is going to get targeted in the next balance update. Um, and that's, like I said, going to be a major adjustment for the character because she really depends on Drive Rush quite a bit. Um, she's a very heavy Drive Rush character. And, and whether this gets tweaked on an individual level or a system-wide changing uh, thing, it, it's going to be a big deal for Jury uh, because she probably has the best overall Drive Rush in the game. Uh, once that's taken care of, I would actually leave the character alone because she's very technical. And while she won Capcom Cup, thanks to Kate here, who is cosplaying as jury on the finals day because shout out to that <laughs> um i don't think her represent <laughs> representation is so high that it warrants nerfing her a ton um she's she's common but she's not super common especially if you just hit her dry brush which again is her best tool i think that that's going to take care of pretty much most of the problems and most of the complaints i see about jury so a nerf but not a gigantic one it takes technical players to play technical characters um you know when i think of very good technical player uh, playing jury I think of just a kid you know mm -hmm. fantastic jury player in my opinion characters that are technical to play because you have to have the ability and uh, mindset and dexterity and everything to do all of that through the complexity of it you should be able to unlock the additional damage and everything that the character has to offer. Um, we didn't notice that uh, CPT was dominated by juries. It was won by Uma, who was a jury player. But um, if we look at the statistics, according to the uh, master's list that was just pulled today, jury is sitting at a six. Cammy's sitting at four. Um, you know, jury, the character that won, it, she's quite a few levels down from Luke, Ken, and even Ryu and DJ at this point. Um, I I think that I would say I think she's okay where she is. Okay, so That's keep funny. her the same. This yeah. Works. Winning some jury fans out there, not only with your cosplay, but your opinions. So. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on here, we've got Chun-Li. Um, I think Chun-Li has mostly been really strong in Japan while not having a ton of results outside the land of the rising sun. Um, as such, if there's only one region really putting Chun-Li on the map, I think that this character is getting consistently overrated by a lot of people in the community. Um, I don't think that Chun is bad at all. Um, she's obviously very good. However, I don't think she's clearly in the top three right now, as some other people have put her up there. I just don't think her results and the usage have, have sp spoken of that uh, outside of Japan. Um, so if they get the top tiers, I can see Chun-Li receiving some minor nerfs as well, but I think they're going to mostly leave her alone. So my vote here for Chun-Li is, is mostly the same based on her technical skill and ability that she requires. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a pretty good spot to keep her at. Chun-Li on the master's list is sitting at the 11th spot and um I, I feel that her general uh, quality of life right now is pretty good. Uh, in my opinion, the enhancement that we've seen from previous Street Fighter games to Street Fighter 6 with the addition of the uh, Serenity engine for Chun-Li, I think has really unlocked an additional level for technical players 
to take her to that extra level. And she's doing fantastically with it. Um, now, if anybody wants to play Chun-Li, you don't have to use the Serenity extra options, but it, it certainly does help if you're able to uh, stance switch into that. Um, in the most recent uh, update, she did receive two nerfs. So her air lightning legs does now have scaling of 20%. And they expanded her hurt box around her neutral light punch. So, I mean, that is that is interesting to see. But um, in the right hands, like we just said with uh, Jury and um, uh, even, you know, uh, I would have to say, at, at certain moments, JP, uh, mm -hmm. you know, technical characters. If you're able to unlock and tap into all that, I think you should be able to get the damage and the rewards uh, along with it. Because in addition to all of that, it, or and even DJ at that point, you're juggling all of this stuff along with the drive rush gauge and the levels. So that's an additional chunk of everything that you have to do, Aki, mm -hmm. you know? that you have to juggle in addition to the character's engine. So I, I think she's in a, uh, a good spot. I'd keep her the same. All right, there it is. So yeah, it's, it, the technical discussion here is gonna kind of come in with the next character and it's it, along with character variety, I think that when you start introducing human error into it where you've got to juggle 50 things, right. it should be a factor in the balance. Uh, and the same with this character here is Rashid. Um, Rashid definitely came out strong as the latter part of season one of Street Fighter VI played out, um, but I don't think there's any justification for nerfs or buffs just yet. So I would actually vote to keep him the same. Um, this character does scare me, however, because of how insane and great he was in the prior game. Um, but considering that he's a very technical character and, and that his results have not been spectacular, I think he's in a pretty nice spot overall. So I think that, that you know, the minor tweaks are going to give to everyone should be sufficient with, with Rashid. I don't think they need to really overhaul much at all. I think he's a very interesting and well done character in this game. Um, so I'm very happy with where he's at. How about you? Absolutely. He must be a technical player. Uh, to be able to handle everything that Rashid has in his kit. He is sitting at 18th in the character usage for the Masters. And uh, we did see Momoshi using Rashid, and he made 13th at EVO. And remember, Rashid was released maybe 18 days before EVO, 20 days before EVO. But um, he was able to pick Rashid up and, and do very well with him, making 13th. He did receive good and bad adjustments for this most recent patch. So a couple of nerfs here. They expanded his hurt box on startup for his uh, neutral light punch. Mm -hmm. uh, something great uh, the Rashid likes to fish with a lot, try to get a confirm. And um, later on, uh, for frames 9 through 11, they retracted the hurt box back. So a buff that they did give him, the EX spinning mixture. Um, the third attack, he uh, does now have invincibility to midair attacks until the end of his active frame. So that is a buff that they gave him. So he is a little bit of a, a jumble of things. Um, I have a feeling what happened was because he was a, a summer character, a summer DLC, they probably did say, you know what, we need to see the character usage of what's going on and the feedback of what's happening because then at that point we are the testers and then they probably said okay you know what we need to tweak this and tweak that and, and try to uh, nail him down a little bit. I think he's in a very good spot but I, I think he could use some some tiny little tiny little buffs uh, very slight ones very slight quality of life in my opinion. Okay all right. So. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it's quite interesting with Rashid because I, the the EX spinning mixer thing, uh, OD spinning mixer, was mm -hmm. primarily and showing Capcom does pay attention to this stuff. Yes. Uh, we covered it on event hubs, uh, and it was a, quite a big thing on social media that his anti air solution, that solution, would sometimes lose where it should not have. And Capcom went specifically in and addressed that in this patch. So more evidence that Capcom does pay attention to this stuff and, and very much cares about the opinions that are out there. Uh, moving on here, we've got Blanca. Um, mm -hmm. And, and of all things, I, I think that Blanca has a shot at getting nerfed because of one key aspect of the character. And that is he's designed to be a troll or joke character. And he might be a little bit too good given his overall context of what he's designed to do. 
Uh, as such, I'd alter his air beast roll to not be so heavily plus on block. Um, you can make that thing like plus eight, uh, you know, if you, you do it correctly and stuff. And that, that move allows him to escape some pressure situations and completely change the momentum of a matchup back in his favor. And that's probably too much for him given what he should be because he has an OD reversal that's completely invincible for 10 frames as, as EX up ball. Um, and that's what he should be doing to escape pressure uh, as I think his air beast roll being plus on block is a little bit too strong for this character. So uh, shockingly enough, of all things, I don't think Blanc is a terrific character. Uh, mostly Mena RD out there in Nishikin and a few other people doing some work with him, but I think he might be a little too strong given what his archetype is. Um, in general, uh, Blanca sitting at a spot of 15th in the Masters list there. Historically, I remember uh, playing against Blancas in 4 and 5, and generally you would want to stay more in the center of the screen, and if the Blanca ball uh, comes towards you, you try to block it, and then of course playing Vega do uh, a crouching strong, a uh, crouching medium punch with claw on, and no matter how far really he would bounce back, you could, you could still swipe him, mm -hmm. and poke him out of it. Then after probably about three or four times of that Blanca just gets frustrated and just will not do it anymore um, we do have the option of the parry system in Street Fighter 6 so you can counter Blanca in that way with the parry and the perfect parry if Blanca did have uh, a couple of a uh, couple of little nerfs I think it would be I think it would be okay but nothing too outrageous mm. nerfs nerf Nerfs for Blanca. <laughs> All right, next up here we have Kimberly, um, who most closely resembles Ibuki um, for the yes. past games in terms of her play style. Um, and this is a character who's absolutely dominant in the corner, and I don't think Capcom should give her anything to aid her rush down her setups there. She's got plenty as is. This is a character, when she pushes you there, you are lucky to escape right. out of there. Um, however, I might make her spray paint can stock move slightly faster by like a frame or two to give her more chances to restock her resources after she spent them. Um, you see very few Kimber Kimberly players go for this move as is, and I think like lessening the recovery time on it a little bit by a frame or two might make it more viable to get it out in neutral. Um, and that would be a potentially very significant buff for the character because you're giving her more resources to do a rushdown with, which she's already phenomenal with. Um, I, I just, I don't think we're seeing the character as much as we should right now on the tournament circuit. It's kind of rare to see Kimberly. And so I'd personally like to see her buffed a little bit. Uh, and that's the way I do it. Kimberly is basically... Um, sitting at a spot of 14th in the Masters list. Definitely could be utilized more. Uh, Shine is a fantastic Kimberly player, and so is uh, Boss. Um, she does have uh, very strong corner mix-ups, which is great. Uh, but in addition to that, on the um, things that could be improved upon, her reversal isn't necessarily the best. So maybe she could get some uh, some v uh, very light buffs to her uh, her reversal, and um, I think Kimberly is definitely one of those characters where you have to be very careful with how you try to um, pick and choose what you want to change on her because mm -hmm. she could just really run the gambit in the game. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, I think a, a buff to her uh, reversal would be a good thing. So. Very well said. Very well said. Buffs. Ed. Um, and this guy has been all over the map in terms of people, um, like what they think of the character, how strong or how weak he is. Um, but he's so new and we understand so little about where the character is going to be a year from now. I think Capcom is going to leave him alone. Um, mm -hmm. I see fairly regularly people um, streaming the character um, uh, and using him at a very high level and, and, and doing some good stuff that we kind of didn't anticipate initially um, the first two weeks that we had him. Um, and I, I actually think that there's a pretty solid chance now that he makes an impact on the competitive scene. Uh, we're already seeing that now with some players and you know sometimes we get DLC characters like Aki who there's a few people who play her but like we never see it. I don't think that's gonna be the case with Ed. I actually think Ed is going to end up being a pretty decent character in terms of the tournament circuit. And so I think that leaving him alone as is until we know a little bit more about him, I think is a really good idea. And maybe some minor changes or something like that, but he's so new, he just came out and we're just getting so experienced with him. I think that leaving him alone is the best bet. Ed, according to the master's list is sitting at 21, which is mm -hmm. the last spot because the next character is Dalsim sitting at 20. 
Ed, the newest DLC character for Wintertime, uh, we saw him at, at CPT, at the Capcom Pro Tour uh, 10, and um, his uh, presence into the game came in with the most recent patch. Ending Walker has been doing a fantastic job representing Ed in Street Fighter 6 and Street Fighter 5, in addition to uh, Ryu in Street Fighter 6. For me, watching a Ed Orb combo, the level 2, it's so flashy and it's fun and I love seeing all the craziness that's going on in the screen uh, with it. I have a feeling that what they're doing with Ed is the same thing that they were going, going to do and did with Rashid for the summertime. They gra gather all the statistics, they, you know, watch different parts of high-level matches, things like that. They're taking down all these notes and they're saying, okay, you know what, this is what we need to do to adjust this character, you know, micro adjustments properly. And then the next thing you know, there's going to be a patch and you're going to see, just like we saw with Rashid, a little change here, a little change there, and they're just ironing everything out. So I would think that the same thing is going to be happening with Ed right now. I'd say, you know, if he had anything, possibly some slight buffs, but we're, we're going for the same buff. Okay. All right. Makes sense. Uh, you just mentioned him here, Dalsum. Um, Dalsum, I feel like, is going to come on stronger than he did in Season 1, so I am mainly thinking they should only do small changes to give the specialist the time to showcase what he's truly capable of. Um, it's entirely possible, as is, that we see this character log some big wins here in Season 2. Um, I could see... Uh, on that uh, slightly different turn here that, that Dalsum might get some quality of life improvements, mm -hmm. but not a ton of stuff because this guy tends to run on the very polarizing side of the matchups where he can absolutely dominate some of the characters in the game. Um, and it can be extremely frustrating to play against Dalsum. Um, but he's also super technical. And, and that often means the community needs to get a good bit of time to get fully acclimated with him. So I believe that, that Street Fighter 6 Dalsum just needs some more time for the character specialist to come up there and really show what he's capable of. Yes. Um, so I, I could see, again, minor buffs, but mostly keeping him the same. How do you feel about Dalsum? Dalsum is sitting at the second to last spot Mm. at the master's usage and we all know why it's because his his actual move set is extremely difficult uh to work with um i would have to say uh the high level players using dulcim uh mr crimson and garnet do a fantastic and historically fantastic job um maining Dulcim uh, across multiple Street Fighter games. He's a very technical character and uh, for Street Fighter 6 and and a couple you know previous Street Fighter games, he's the only character that has that type of move set uh, which makes him a character specialist type of, of character there. We're not seeing 10 million Dulcims taking over the world and we didn't see Dulcim really starting to take off in Street Fighter V until the final season. So I'm, I'm not too concerned about, um, you know, Dulcim being too wild and out of control because of uh, the amount of difficulty involved in playing him. But um, that, that's also a concern, though, because if you don't have access to playing a character at that type of level, when you run across them, in a competition then they're going to light you up because they're so rare yeah. so uh, i think he's i think he's at a, a good spot but he could use uh probably some slight buffs here and there so i'm gonna go same buffs okay <laughs> <laughs> all right next up we've got my main um and i'm gonna vote for uh, buffs on aki um, and I would mostly beef up her damage a bit um, off of hit confirms and neutral and also her poison damage mm -hmm. um, it, Because the damage on her specials are some of the lowest in the actual game Like if you compare her special moves to like JP, they're they're way lower in terms of the damage she gets off of them um, Now however when Aki has resources and she has the opponent cornered She can definitely dish out the damage in and all of that is fine um, However, she really struggles to keep up with most of the cast and neutral set play and I think increasing her damage ability in these situations especially with her poison, would help even the odds quite a bit. Um, I believe Aki is pretty low tier, somewhere around the bottom five range, um, and she's very, very technical, and her power level doesn't seem to be in line with the skill it takes to play her. 
So she, since she's not popular and she has a ton of losing matchups, I think that, that that's the case for buffing her significantly. Um, and again, just that damage on her specials, boy, is it really low. And just juicing that up a little bit, um, I, I think would tilt, uh, you could you could definitely go too far and she could become a very dominant character, which you you know wouldn't want to see. But I, I think that with the technical skill required, I think that she's definitely in line for some buffs. Aki is sitting at 16th on the master's list. And um, according to the most recent update uh, patch, which was the Ed, uh, you know, update patch, they gave her a few buffs. So on her neutral a medium punch uh, from three active frames now to five active frames. And then they also gave her um, on her crouching light punch, the hitbox, they expanded it forward. That's one thing that I really <laughs> noticed. I'm like, man, I'm getting freaking counter hit here. Yeah. No matter what I do, I'm like, ow, <laughs> ow, that hurts. <laughs> you know, jab, jab, jab. So, um, yes, same argument as before. Technical players, technical characters. You put in the time, you get through the skill cap, you can access the damage. I say go for it. So if she gets gets some buffs, I, I think it would be okay as long as you understand how to use her engine in addition to the engine that the game is running on and be able to use her at that high level to access it. So um, I would say some, some light buffs, yes. Okay, all right. Uh, next up, we've got Honda, and this is this can be a pretty controversial character in some circles. Um, and I think Honda is mostly good where he's at because he can run a little too heavy on the just do it side of things. Um, so an adjustment I wouldn't mind seeing is potentially changing his sumo splash so it has slightly longer startup, so it's a little easier to react to in exchange for giving Honda increased health. Um, even some of the best Honda players I've ran across, they feel like they're just kind of throwing stuff out there and hoping it works. And that's really not a good recipe for thoughtful play. Um, and I mean, these are some really top end high end Honda players, and it really feels like they're just kind of throwing spaghetti at a wall and hoping it sticks. Um, and that's really a shame. Like characters shouldn't really play like that. And so I think uh, for the trade off here is Honda's fairly low tier. Most people don't consider him very strong. Um, I think the trade off of reducing the effectiveness of his sumo splash, which is probably his best move is you give him more health and you give him the same health as Zangief where he's able to take more of a beating but he's got to be more thoughtful though uh, he has to use his head a little bit more uh, not literally but figuratively <laughs> and, <laughs> and approach a matchup that way um, and this is a guy you do not want him being uh, top tier because of the reasons I just outlined um, so I think the best way to adjust him is, is by just giving him more health I actually think that's very fair um, I, I completely agree with that. He is sitting at 17th spot in the Masters list, and um, he didn't have any crazy adjustments or changes in this most recent patch. My only concern, you know, just like we were saying, uh, you have to be uh, acknowledging what your um, meter uh, usage is. I would definitely say meter management is definitely key and um, maybe th having certain access things um, possibly eat more meter so that it isn't as used but at the same time uh, you know that's part of how you play them so it is he is a difficult he's a very difficult uh, balance there um, they would really have to go over uh, Honda very carefully with how they would move forward with him. Mm. Yes. So, so what do you think, uh, same nerf or buff? If they buffed his health, like like you said, mm -hmm. I could see if that would then parlay to a little bit less of an aggressive uh, meter usage on the opponent's side, as in, you know, we're constantly losing uh, gauge to mm -hmm. specials and um, he would have to be a little conscious of his meter management but I think that uh, having the increased health would be a good thing for that so really really that's all three yeah <laughs> really that's all three we got a trifecta here that's it we're good
All right, the next character we've got is Manon. Um, and Manon is a character who could run through the competition if given too many buffs. So I'd look to address what I feel her biggest weakness is, and that's susceptibility to Drive Rush. Uh, watching Idon play, who I think is a terrific Manon player, a Capcom Cup winner, um, he would lose far too often to people just hammering away at Manon with various drive rush setups. So I think that, that making her main tool for stopping that a neutral, which is her crouching light kick, she also has crouching light punch, which is already a very, very good button. Um, but I would make her crouching light kick one frame faster because it reaches further. It's generally a very good check for her. Um, and I think addressing her main weakness has the potential to make this character quite a bit better. And considering she's a grappler, I think just a few things of this note would be sufficient for her. I don't think she needs a lot. Um, I think she's not in a terrible spot. She just kind of probably needs her main weakness addressed. Nine, I think, is very interesting with her uh, five metal system in general. I think that uh, generally she is sitting at the 13th spot on the master's usage list. They did give her uh, some buffs. Some of them was to her level two tole, I believe how you say it's French. Um, it does hit uh, mid-air actively. And what happens now is, is that the following attacks for her are easier now to land, whereas before sometimes it wouldn't land. I think Manon's in a very interesting spot because if you look at the grapplers, Zangief, Lily, and Manon. Zangief initially has the most damage, Lily initially has the second most damage, and at the core, Manon has the least. But when she does get uh, even, even four, four to five gold medals, when she's at the maximum of five, she gets roughly, I believe, 35 to 37% on a command grab, which is more than Zangief does. So. She is a character that would have to also be uh, in, looked at uh, and fine-tuned, uh, mm -hmm. just like we were saying for uh, Ed Rashid. Um, you know, a little changes here and there. Uh, they definitely can't be uh, blanket to changes, but I could definitely see tweaks. Absolutely. All right. So light buffs. Light buffs. All right. Next character is Marissa. Uh, Marissa's damage might be a tad too good. Um, but this is a character who's popular and has produced in tournament without being super dominant. So I don't think her adjustment should be substantial, which is why I vote for mostly keeping her the same. Um, I'm not a big fan of two-touch KOs, and Marissa is definitely one of those characters who does this. So I think a slight tweak to her damage may be in order, as we might even see an overall damage nerf um, in Season 2 to pretty much the entire cast, because um, that has been the history of what we've seen with the um, Season 2 of Street Fighter games. Um, there's almost a universal damage nerf, and if that's the case, I think that Marissa is going to be just fine with that, and I'd actually leave her completely intact. If, if everyone gets a damage nerf, that's going to take care of her two-touch stuff, um, and I think she'd be perfectly fine there. Marissa is sitting at the ninth spot on the Masters list, and I think she's at a pretty good spot, too, to be honest. Um, when she has all the momentum on her side, she can definitely be a handful. I think Big Bird does a fantastic job representing uh, Marissa and showcasing everything that she can do. If they adjust her damage uh, a tiny bit, I, I'd say I, I think that would be fair. Um, but I would not adjust or uh, look at the armor that she has, I wouldn't adjust any of that, or, you know, or her startup times, because really, you could try to hit her with a low, or you could try to do a grab, um, you know, and try to, try to counter her that way. So, right now, in my opinion, generally speaking, I'd say stay the same. All right. Yes. So, next, we have Jamie. Um, Jamie still feels a bit underwhelming to me, so I wonder if altering how his drink system works would be in order. Uh, my idea would be that if Jamie has one or more drinks in the system and the round ends, his next drink in neutral in the next round would be 25 frames instead of the 50 frames, so taking half the time it normally does. And you could actually mark this some way in the user interface so that people know that Jamie's next drink will be fast, um, so you know they don't try to punish something that's you know going to be a faster animation, something like that. And Jamie wouldn't keep his drinks between rounds because um, I, I, I think Capcom's 
rightfully terrified of that. That this right. character, when he gets those drinks in a system, he becomes incredibly dominant, so good. Um, this would just give him the ability to get one back quickly, which would be a nice new addition for him. Um, and yeah, so I, I think that this is a guy who can be incredibly dominant. We saw that in the beta um, with him that, that you know, with people uh, when he was stronger and people were getting those drinks so fast, like that, that this guy will just run over people. Um, right. and, and so Capcom is very afraid of him. And I think just another progressive step to give him one more ability to get a drink a little faster could be a very good difference for the Jamie players out there. Jamie is sitting at the master's list at a level seven. Every time you take a drink, if you don't combo into the drink, uh, you know, same with Lily with the wind stocks, you're leaving your character vulnerable. So they did give him some buffs uh, more recently. His level two, uh, the Devil Song, where he just takes a giant drink. Um, as long as he is at the four drink max, he will go through and uh, utilize his level two in the round as long, and then at the end of that, he will keep the drinks. And then when the round is done, then he has to start again. Which I, I think that's very fair. I, I you know I think that's that's pretty good. I, I think I think some buffs are good for Jamie, in my opinion. Yeah, buffs for Jamie. All right. We need to see more Jamies out there. Yeah, it would be nice to see a few more Jamies out there. Um, so next we've got a uh, Zangief, and I would keep Zangief as is with one change and that would be making his OD Lariat work as an anti cross up move uh, but not against meaty jump ins um, if someone gets you on a meaty jump in like that it's still going to clip Zangief um, but being able to escape Geef's corner pressure with a jump could be very strong against the character and I think his weaknesses are pronounced enough where you'll still be able to fight against him pretty well if he can deal with cross ups a little bit better um, giving Geef players that that thing um, where, where they can knock people out of the sky a little bit more like I think that's fairly good for the character and like when it break him too much um i still don't think you ever want to keep being too high on the tier list from what we've seen like in, in previous you know street fighter games and you know uh, arcade edition and street fighter 4 he was like a top three character right between uh yun and yang and so we saw a bunch of people it was like very common to see uh geef in top eight in there there were a lot of complaints about that we saw uh, very similar things back in uh way back in the day of uh um street fighter 2 turbo um where zangief had his low lariat that was invincible and he was a top tier character it's generally not gone well and, and Capcom has almost never kept him as a top tier character so I don't think that you want to over buff him ever but I think this would be fairly uh, reasonable in line with the character and not not just take him to the you know not take him to the top end of the tiers. Geef is listed as a hard to use character and he is. He's very difficult uh, to use in uh, Street Fighter 6 uh, especially Without access to Green Hand, uh, he did not have Green Hand in Street Fighter V. Street Fighter V uh, sort of went uh, after a, um, a parry armor flex absorption system for Zangief. Um, in uh, Street Fighter VI, uh, they do have an armor on his super punch, and then he starts up and tries to do that. Um, but, in which are, you know, both are good moves, but they don't quite equate to what the Green Hand had with uh, the aggressive uh, movement forward with that. Um, I would think, um, just like you said, John, same thing, uh, a little bit of an extended uh, hitbox uh, to the opposite shoulder for his lariat there uh, to keep cross-ups from happening, except for the meaties. And I specifically remember in Street Fighter IV that different lariats had different sounds and they had different properties. And that's why having headsets were so important at tournaments, because you could hear when Snake Eyes was doing those different lariats, and you'd say, oh man, you know, you got, you can jump in on this one, you can't jump in on that one, it was, it was a big deal. Um, they did uh, give Zangief some buffs to this most recent patch here, and, um, you know, uh, some of the buffs included his uh, ODEX Lariat uh, can um, confirm, you know, you can connect it to the level three mm -hmm. and you can con uh, connect it to the level two now. And um, in addition to his level one, which is the uh, air mm -hmm. man grab, the hitbox has been expanded downwards more now. So he has a, a, a larger chance of um, getting the scoop. 
So I think those were some some good quality of life updates for Zangief. Uh, hopefully we do see a little bit of an adjustment to his lariats in general. So buffs. Buffs. Buffs for Zangief. All right. And the last character we've got is Lily. Um, Lily is one of the most underwhelming characters in the entire game. So I'd start by giving her strike invincibility on her OD wind clad DP. That means that she has to build up a wind clad stock uh, to get invincibility. Um, and that move actually currently only has invincibility to throws. I'm not sure why, but for some reason that Capcom gave her that property. Um, this is a character heavily dependent on using her resources to win. And the fact that she'd not only have to spend drive gauge, which is typical for characters having a, um, a reversal, invincible reversal, but also one of her wind clad stocks, mm -hmm. it, uh, that feels really fair to me. Um, her DP is a very good anti-air weapon as is, but it doesn't have very many defensive uses besides that. And it feels like Lily should have some ability to spend her hard-earned hard -earned resources to reverse momentum in a matchup if she's built them up. Uh, T-Hawk's DP could be used as a reversal. I don't see why Lily's uh, OD wing-clad um, DP shouldn't be able to do something similar to that. My, my vote would be for buffs. Lily is sitting at 19 which means Ed, the newest character, is at 20th. Dulcine is at, at uh, 21st. Ed is 21st, Dulcine is 20th, and Lily is 19th. So any character that, you know, you have to take a drink, you have to um, do a uh, win stock to uh, try to build up some momentum, that is going to completely leave you vulnerable. And um, just like uh, you were saying earlier, uh, an invincibility on startup uh, for uh, Lily's Tomahawk would be a nice adjustment for her, I would say. I have a feeling when I initially saw Lily, I immediately said, this is the character I'd like to play because I thought she has range with the clubs. She has a command grab. And she may be invincible to fireballs, you know, things like that. And I thought, this character, she may be completely out of control. I think that's one of the reasons why they've been very, very cautious in also balancing Lily out. Mm -hmm. Because I think that she could also sort of run the gambit of the game if, if we're not necessarily careful with her too. So um, I think that, uh, you know, Lily and Vega are in the same orbit <laughs> with each other. Yeah. So, and I'd like to see some uh, quality of life updates for Lily and, and do a bit better. Plus we were speaking about character variety. You know, I'd love to see some more Lily out there. So yeah. buffs. Yeah, it's a there's a long running rumor that, that someone at Capcom's Battle Balance team is really good with Lily, and that's how come yes. she came out of the gate uh, pretty underwhelming. And I really wouldn't mind seeing some more buffs for that character because she's so it's cool to see Hibiki up there, but so many other uh, few lovely players actually make it through, and it would be nice to see the character more often. She's very well done. She's a cool character. Let's see yeah. more Lily. We hope you guys had a wonderful time here with John and Kate. Plus eight on block and a very, very special shout outs here to 86. Um, thank you guys so much for the t-shirts and um, stickers and everything. Please check out 86 online and, you know, get all kinds of cool swag and merchandise from there. And thank you guys so much for joining us. We hope you guys had a wonderful time and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.